Well, last week's sermon, I can't go over all of it. It was um, dominion and authority versus power. So if you get a chance, you got to go catch up on the uh, YouTube video. Uh, but this is going to be, uh, I guess it's sort of a part two to that, but it's a different title. So it's not a part two, but it is a part two. Y'all get that? Uh, but today's sermon is dominion versus domination. And as a subtitle, it's going to be who am I, God? Somebody say, who am I, God? And I'm asking you to stand to your feet one more time as I read the word of the Lord really fast. We're going to be coming from Colossians 1, 15 through 20. And I'm reading the TBT version. What's the name of the title? Who am I, God? I want you to remember that. And the read is following. He is the divine portrait, the true likeness, and speaking of Jesus here, of the invisible God, and the firstborn heir of all creations. For in him was created the universe of things, both in the heavenly realm and on earth. All that is seen and all that is unseen, every seat of power, Thrones or dominions, realms of government, principalities, powers, and authorities. It all exists through him and for his purpose. He existed before anything was made. And now everything finds completion in him. He is the head of the body, which is the church. And since he is the beginning and the firstborn heir in resurrection, he is the most exalted one, holding first place in everything. For God is satisfied to have all his fullness dwelling in Christ and by the blood of his cross everything in heaven and earth is brought back to him back to his original intent restored to innocence once again you may be seated now last week we uh, spoke of uh, more of the authority if you was here uh, having to be subject to authority in order to have authority. And I use the centurion example. When he came to him and said, hey, Jesus, can you heal my son? And Jesus says, I'll go with you. And he says, hey, I know how this works. I'm a man that's under authority, both under authority and having authority. So all you need to do, Jesus, is send your word. And Jesus says, I marveled at his faith. I've never seen it before in my life. Amen. Go, it is as you have believed. Amen. And so that's the logist of last week's word, but there's so many more nuggets in that. I don't have time to, we'll be here for four hours if I, if I go back over that stuff. So um, this is going to be a very important part. And it's how to walk in the dominion God has placed. All right. First, you got to remember, you have to be subjected to authority in order to have authority. And now we're going to talk about some walking in the dominion. Anybody want to walk in God's dominion? Yes. First, we'll discover, uh, I'm going to talk about the dominion and domination. And uh, it's a, let me tell you something. This is a revelation that God has given me. So listen to it. It is powerful. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We praise you, God. We magnify you, God. We lift you up this day, oh God. Father, let them hear your, your, your voice, God, and not the man that's behind it, God. Father, we thank you, God, for the offering. We thank you for those who gave, who had the desire to give, Father. We thank you even now, Lord Father, that I lift up, Lord, Lord Father, your voice in this place, O oh God. Father, may your angels capture every principality, Father, every demonic spirit, Father, everything that would try to take the voice of your people, try to distract them, God, that they would hear the word, Lord Father, and that they would, Lord Father, Lord Father, listen, Lord Father, to the word and become who you called them to be. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right, well, that, now in the kingdom of God, there's going to be two types of power that, that we're battling here. You, you know, we're, talking, we're battling with dominion and domination. And guess whose domination is? And guess who dominion is? Anybody? Thank you. All right, anybody on this side? Yes. So we got all that down packed, all right? And, uh, you know, at the, the first logist of it, domination and, and, and dominion are words that can mean to rule over. All right. So but they have very different con connotations to them. And so 
um, dominion is the right to rule. Remember that. It's the right to rule. Now this refers to power and authority. Remember I told you last week, the Bible tells you that, hey, if you, if you, you can have authority and you can have power. Everybody in here has power. I gave the example of if I pulled a gun out, the only requirement is that you have the strength to be able to pull the trigger, right? And so you can take the, the young man back here, as long as he can pull that trigger, he has the power to take a life, all right? But if you don't use, in the kingdom of God, if you don't use power legitimately, you can find yourself in trouble with God, amen? All right, and so Satan has power, but he's illegitimate. Are you getting that? And so I'm gonna show you how Satan got his power, all right? Now, dominion is the right to rule. Now, remember this, one who's given dominion has authority and the right to use the power to enforce that dominion, amen? You getting that? Now, dominion also refers to a territory. I told you God's power and his dominion comes with a certain jurisdiction, all right? And I gave the example of um, if you was on expressway and you, you've ever seen a police officer ahead of you, you saw the lights, you slowed down real fast, right? But you get up on them and you see, what is Cobb County doing way out here in Bartow County? You have no jurisdiction, so you'll speed right past him because you know he has power, but he has no jurisdiction to arrest you. Are you hearing me? To give you a ticket, are y'all getting that? So that's, that's the difference between jurisdiction. And it's the same thing with God. You have to know your jurisdiction that God gave you power to operate in. Are you getting that? Well, Satan's gonna look at you and say, Jesus I know. Paul, I know, but who are you? You have no jurisdiction, you have no power, you have no authority, you have no dominion to tell me to leave. Are y'all getting that? And I'm excited about today's message because somebody's going to wake up today. Amen? <laughs> and I'm talking about spirit realm. You're going to realize, hey, you've been allowing some things in your life that you don't have to. Amen? Now, Domination comes from a Latin word, dominus, and it means master over or lord over, to lord over. Now, domination involves the imbalance of power. It means to devalue, to demean, to diminish others. All right, anybody ever seen a relationship where you see somebody, one or the other, and it could be both a man or a woman, that they, listen, they're very dominant in the relationship. Anybody? All right, let me... Anybody been in a relationship? Maybe y'all agree to that one. All right? And we've all seen that with our own eyes or may have experienced that with our own eyes when we see somebody dominating another. And you can't quite understand because you'll see that one person is like, this is, this is a really good person. Why are they with this person? Have you ever seen that? Listen, I got, a, I got a family member I can name right now. Lord have mercy. But domination actually means to bring under suggestion to dominate or control by military force. Remember that. Remember we're talking about kingdoms here. All right, so if you don't understand how kingdoms work, it don't work like uh, the democracy in America. Amen? So sometimes we grow up and we, we're taught some things that don't have anything to do with how God's kingdom. And so what does the Bible says? Thy kingdom come, how? By your will being done. That's how the kingdom of God comes, by his will being done. Are you getting that? Okay, so in dealing, dealing with, I told you guys last week, in dealing with Satan's, uh, we left off, the last thing I said was dealing with Satan's kingdom. There's two primary entities. We have demons, all right? Now those are illegal spirits that's here on earth, all right? Um, they come down, they come from the, from the, the fallen uh, Nephilim. I told you guys before, I taught this before, where the angels came down and slept with women, and God, they, listen, then they begin to taint the land. All right, they, they, they assumed all the man, and so God saw that there was evil everywhere. And God says, I gotta destroy everything. And if you, if, you, if you understand the Nephilim are the children of these angels, fallen angels. Now, those are the first thing we deal with, the children. Uh, now we gotta deal with the strong men. These are the princes. When you hear of princes of the air, princes of the sea, princes of the, these are prince spirits. You don't deal with them the same way. You deal with demons through authority, because they have no reason. Now, you deal with prince apalities, prince spirits, by dominion. And I'm gonna show you that, all right? See, they, they, 
Yeah. You know why? Because I told you, what does Prince Spirits do? How did they get their power? It actually started with Adam. Adam actually gave. What, is it, what did Jesus say? What, what, what did Satan say to Jesus when he came to him? He says, hey, all these things have been given to me. Just bow your knee and I'll give it to you. Are you getting that? It was given to Adam. And so I'm going to show you this thing. And so, uh, let me put it this way. There were certain legalities given to prince spirits. In other words, they are operating, demons are operating illegal. Spirits are actually operating in legality. Now here they have legal rights because uh, God gave us what? Authority, dominion. And so, do you know you can transfer that authority? As a matter of fact, we do it all the time in relationships. You can transfer your authority, you can transfer your, your dominion in a relationship. Uh, you, anybody? Uh, you hear me? You've seen that happen so many times. Where you get in the wrong relationship and where you end up at. Oh my goodness. Listen, you, you, I don't, listen. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you the wrong relationship with caught. Listen, I almost killed somebody. Are you hearing me? Y'all yeah, got that testimony too. You feel like, listen, this is this is it. <laughs> you see it, listen. I, I listen. I watch I watch 48 hours all the time, y'all. I see it all the time where people have, I mean, just crazy stuff people do out of a relationship. Are you hearing me? Not think you're gonna kill somebody to be with somebody and then you go to jail for the rest of your life. <laughs> Before you even get sentenced, that person's with somebody else. I've seen it. Like, <laughs> but you threw your life away for this person. And this person dating somebody else before you even got sentenced. Are you seeing that? Oh, Lord Jesus. God's talking to somebody in this place. <laughs> Just say guilty. Now, princes exercise dominion over territories so they can enslave men. Are you getting that? And so, anybody... Uh, have you gone into, matter of fact, I'll tell, I told you the story of Hollywood. You go down to Hollywood, listen. Anybody been to Hollywood before? Listen, let me tell you something. It's a, it's a, it's a slap lie, are you hearing me? They showing all the stars and the signatures. You go down there, listen. My first thought was, I wish I brought my gun with me. My goodness. <laughs> Imagine 75, driving along 75 and it's miles of tents with homeless people. You go, you go to Hollywood, you look down, yeah, you see the star, then look up, it's bars all over the buildings. I felt unsafe, I'm like, whoa. They've been lying to us. But they always showing that white Hollywood sign. And people chase it, are you, are you hearing me? And so, print spirits create systems that dominate particular jurisdictions and territories. And so you can go into one territory, like Hollywood, and you see there's money there, but yet there is crime there. You can go into some areas, you'll see prostitution in certain areas. And so they have regions, so you're dealing with print spirits that have regions and they, they're meant to bring, some of it is addiction, certain areas, you go. In certain areas, addiction, some of it is poverty. You notice birds of a feather, what? Yeah. Right? I told you, most people who are in poverty, if they just move 20 miles away, they'll come out of poverty. But they never come, because poverty comes with a mindset. Are you getting that? That's why God got to change you first by changing the way you think before he gives you money, because you're just going to lose it. This is why, listen, 70% of the NFL players are broke within three years after they retire. Because who you are, you return back to. Are you getting that? But we're going to walk into some dominion, amen? Amen. See, we have to stop living our, our mother's and our father's lives. Amen? So certain legalities were given by Adam when Satan came and caused him to fall. He wasn't causing him to fall, just that he was causing, and I'm going to show you this, he's, he caused him to fall so he can take the authority of man. Now you're getting that. I'm going to show you this. Now, let me put this. Because Prince Spirits are now, and I told you, the, you, the young people, I'm so I'm blessed to have you here because if, if God doesn't change this now, and he doesn't send you out to go get your children's and your children's children won't know God. Right now, we're coming to the point where 
uh, uh, mothers were kind of forced to go to church. Our, our generation was kind of forced. And so they, I'm not going to force my child to go to church. And so you have an unchurched generation, an unfathered generation. And these principalities create what you call uh, laws, spiritual laws that cause you to sin against God. Now, think about that. When your children come forth and there's laws created that we must, you can be a him, her, a her, her, a he, he. Just think about that. They not gonna, and they never hear a difference or a God. This is what this is what I was born into. Yeah. So therefore, you're gonna sin against God without even knowing I sinned against God. Are you hearing me? Are you getting that? Yes. The Bible tells you I gave you the Mosaic Law just to show you how sinful you were. In other words, people were sleeping with people's wives because they, they didn't they, they didn't know no. They just I did whatever my flesh told me to do. So if I want to sleep with your wife, I slept with your wife. And so God says I gave it to you, not that you was gonna be able to keep it, so you can have a knowledge. It's when you did something wrong. Amen? Jesus comes back and he says what? I wrote the law now on your heart. So therefore, when you do something wrong, what does your heart begin to do? Do, 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 do. I know I did. Man, I shouldn't have did that. Amen? Remember, God convicts, Satan condemns. Remember, we've seen the two words there. And so, if you're constantly hearing, after you say, God, forgive me, you're constantly hearing, remember what you, now that's condemnation. You need to reject that. Now you're getting that. Now, how do you know principalities do that? Just look at let's look at Sodom and Gomorrah. I'll take it. You know, Adam, Abraham begins to negotiate with God, and he says, "God, if this, if this he said, he said, he, he, he says, get the get ready for the for the ark. I'm getting ready to build an ark. I'm going to destroy land." And, and Abraham begins to negotiate with God. He says, "God, if it's fifty righteous men, would you destroy it?" He began. To, God says, "No, I won't." Then Abraham says, hmm, okay. Well, is it if it's 45 righteous men, which you no, I won't. So he does this and goes through the process until he gets all the way down to 10. And God says, even if you find 10 righteous people, I won't destroy the land. So therefore, you see how these principalities set up where everybody was perverted. Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I think it said one in a hundred men was righteous, and, and, and they, God found no, and I'm not. No, though this is in the Bible, y'all. No woman was righteous. Jesus. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna go here. We got we was one percent. Y'all was no percent. I am just I'm gonna go ahead and throw that out there. I didn't say it was. In, it's in the Bible. He reached. And so, if you notice, it says Jesus is the head, and it says all to bring man back to God's what original intent. So we're going to talk about that original intent today. That's God's original intent for man. Uh, aren't you tired of saying, what am I born for? Why was I here on this earth? You know, I lived probably 30 years of my life wondering why was I created? Amen? Anybody? Yes. Y'all are a boring crowd up here today. <laughs> See, let me tell you something. The ability to understand, this is, this is where most Christians are. The, the ability to understand and I'm going to say accept Jesus as your savior, that depends on the love and grace and the spirit of God. So many people have accepted Jesus, but walking in his dominion is a whole different story. Anybody? Oh my goodness. This is how far most Christians get. And uh, it would never translate to, to walking in dominion. Just accepting Jesus as your savior and this is why people think that I accepted Jesus as my savior, but my, I've never been able to walk in the dominion that Jesus walks in. And so uh, if you don't understand this, somebody say it's another level. It's another level. See, the greatest enemy to man is not Satan. It's, the Bible tells you it's ignorance. Yes. Ignorance of an ancient realm that's much older than you. It's much older than this earth. You have ancient demons that smart. Listen, they, they've been on the, They've seen it all. The Bible tells you there's nothing new under the sun. Now, uh, now, put that together with the princes that came from God and know how, how God's operating. Now, you're getting that. You see, you see, you can't outsmart Satan, is what I'm trying to tell you. All right? The only way you're going to be able to defeat him is walking in God's dominion. Are you getting that? Oh, Jesus. See, if you don't get this, your life is going to be a misrepresentation of Jesus. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. 
You, you'll be able to say he's my savior, but your life is not going to say it. <laughs> Are you getting it? So I, me as a, as, a, as a child, I got tired of the pastor telling me God owns everything on, a, on, a, on a, all the cattle on a thousand hills, but your car was a rust bucket. <laughs> Anybody? God owns all the money, but it never translated to dominion. You struggle just like everybody else struggled. Oh, Lord Jesus. Somebody going to get something out of this. See, this is what Satan has used over man to get do, uh, dominion and domination over him. Are you? Let me show you this. This is the reason why Satan hates evangelism in, in a teaching ministry because it transforms a person's mind. All right? He can't be one, one in spirit with people that have given their life with Christ. Now, he can attack the body, but he can't be one in spirit. All right? You know Satan can be one in spirit with you? Let me show you how. This is how the church has lost its power over the enemy. All right, we have no influence. If you notice, the church just has no influence over the, over the realm of the world. None. And so this is a, I like to see Church Unchained as a spark that God is relighting. Yeah. So see it as an honor that God chose you to, to relight his will on the earth. Are you getting it? But you're not going to rewrite. You're not going. You're not going to rewrite it by going to somebody saying, "I gave my life to Jesus." But there's no dominion in your life. There's nothing that shows. Why would I change my life and your life looks just like mine? Are you getting that? How can I say God bless and I ain't got no blessings? Do you see the hypocrisy behind it? Somebody say, "I want to walk in no dominion." The worst thing. Matter of fact, let me think about. It. Anybody ever had a company where you had a boss that was promoted to boss, but they had no authority to fire people? Anybody? You ever seen anybody like that? The worst thing you could do is give somebody dominion, but no power to enforce. What do you do? What does employees end up doing? They end up going to the one who has authority, right? They disrespect them because they already know you can't, you can't enforce nothing. You can say it. Matter of fact, you tell them something to do with no authority, they go to the boss. Say, you want me to do this? Are you seeing that? The worst thing to have is somebody who has dominion, been given dominion, but yet no power to enforce that dominion. You see, the right to rule over dominion, the right to rule over means the right to enforce. Are you getting that? Let's look at Genesis 1. Go to, go to Genesis 1, 26. No. We're going to read through the 28th. You can go through the New King James Version. We're going to start where, where God gave us. We'll see what, what dominion God has given us. You can do the New King James Version. Uh, 126 through 28. Okay. You read that. Then God said, let us make man in our own image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, okay. over Hang the on birds. A second. Hang on a second. Let them have what? Dominion. Okay. Go ahead. Over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you're looking at this carnality in a carnal way, you just think God's talking about the bugs and the these are these are realms God is talking about. Are you getting there? The sea is as a realm. Are you here? Why do you think a demon want to be? Why do you think they call the queen of the? Sea? Are you getting there? These are realms. God gave us dominion over. I better catch this. See, dominion means the right to govern, sovereign control, authority. You know what authority gives? Power to enforce what God has given you. Are you getting that? I told you power Satan has, that's just a force to compel compliance. In other words, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force you to do. It's nothing, like, it's nothing like an employee. If you got a boss 
it's nothing like a, a I'm gonna say an anal boss that makes you do something. Don't you regret when somebody make you do something? And then you have a nice boss that's, that you'll do anything for because he, you know the authority he stands in, but he doesn't lord it over your head. Are you getting that? Are you seeing that? <sighs> See, in the realm of God, everybody has power in here. I told you the story about what happened uh, last week in the church. Uh, people tried to come and destroy the church. And... See, in the, in, the, in the world, you have the power to exact revenge on us. Is that true? But did God give you the authority to? Because the Bible says the vision is mine, says the Do you see how you can get yourself in some trouble? I got the power to. That's not the question. And while I submit to the authority of God that says vengeance is mine, I'm not going to step back up. Are you getting that? See, that's called walking under authority. See, I'm subjecting myself to God's law. I know I can punch you in the face, but I'm not. It's not, it's not like you're not going to feel like it now. I didn't hurt. Listen, I didn't hurt the voice. Listen. <laughs> But I subject myself under the authority of God. Being a man under authority, now having authority. Are you getting that? Oh, Jesus. You see, authority is what makes power legitimate. You know why? Because authority comes with some jurisdictions. So therefore, the Bible tells you, heaven suffers violence in the what? Violence in the so therefore, there's some areas in your life where God is giving you dominion and you're waiting for God to do something. He says, I already gave you dominion over it. Wow. Wow. Are you kidding me? I already gave you dominion. But because Adam gave our dominion, we're so used to not having dominion that we try to chase a power. And this is why Satan traps men. We try to chase power. What is power in this world? Knowledge. We try to chase a special. It makes us feel real good when somebody tells you, hey, I know the secret to how you can get here. Everybody else don't know it. Isn't that true? You know how some of the greatest schemes happen? Because somebody tell you, hey, see, I know how. See, the rich people get rich. See, I, I learned that. Let me show you. And you feel like you're, you, you've, been, you've been given a, 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 a gold lamp. You say, yeah, come on. I'm going to show you the way to how to get rich, too. See, everybody don't know that. That's why everybody's poor, but I'm going to show you the way. You feel privileged, don't you? end up investing your money and they take it all. <laughs> Psalms 115 and 16 says, The heavens, even the heavens are yours, Lord, but the earth have you given to the children of men. Are you getting that? You see here, immediately, dominion was given to man. You see that? Now, in order to, to know who's illegal on this earth, you got to be three things for a man, to be a man. Number one, you must have a spirit. Remember I told you, you are spirit first. You're not a body first. You're spirit first. Number two, you must have a body. All right. Number three, you must have a mind, will, and emotions that govern the spirit and the body together. That's, what, that's the difference between anybody, anybody on this earth, any animal on this earth, is that we have a spirit, a body, and we have a mind that governs. Therefore, we have dual citizenship. We can both live on this earth, and we can both talk to God. Are you seeing that? But you were first spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, we was first spirit. First spirit. Isn't somebody getting something out of this? Yes. This means that any spirit that tries to exercise authority and dominion is illegal. Are you Any demon that tries to exercise authority over your life is illegal. Are you getting that? Any demon that tries to give you, this is why Satan takes prince spirits and sets up, sets up drugs so you can get addicted to it. Therefore, the thing that you're supposed to be having dominion over now dominates you. Are you getting that? Are you catching that? Well, so I'm seeing you in your older ear, years right there. Boy, <laughs> Y'all look so much alike. <laughs> you want to see how you're going to look? Look at your father. <laughs> Same mouth positions and everything, both of y'all. 
<laughs> God, so much like. Somebody say, let them have dominion over the earth. That means two things. One, number one, man is legal stewards and rulers of the earth. Go to uh, Psalms 8 and 5, the TPT. I'm going to read Psalms 2. Look at this. Let me show you something very powerful. Psalms 8 5? Yeah, no, I, there's just, I'm going to read this 8 and 2 first. Okay. I don't come from the AMPC. A then, then you skip over and you're going to read 8 5. Eight through, no. Go through, yeah, 8 and 5. Look at this. I read this before, but I didn't hear it. It didn't hit me until God gave me the revelation on this. This is David speaking. This says, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have been ordained, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you might silence the enemy and the avengers. Do you know what that means? That these little children, the gag gag goo you hear, actually has power over Satan. Are you, are you, are you seeing this? This is the reason why, I was wondering why Satan likes to try to attack children. Even the Gaga Googles, it says, out of the mouth of nursing infants, have you ordained the strength in them because of the enemies. So therefore, every time a baby say Gaga Google or laugh, or, it's, it's power over the enemy. Now you see the dominion God is starting out as a child. Oh, somebody in my name. You go ahead and read that. Now, finish reading that. Yet what an honor you have given to men, created only a little lower than Elohim, crowned with glory and magnificence. You have delegated to them rulership over all you have made, with everything under their authority, placing... Ooh, stop right there. How much is under the authority? Everything. All right. Everything. Go ahead. Everything under their authority, placing earth itself under the feet of your image bearers. All the created order and every living thing of the earth, sky, and the sea. You see that? Of the earth, sky, the sky, and the sea. And the sea. Are you getting that? Now go ahead, continue. The wildest beasts and all that move in the paths of the sea. Everything is in submission to Adam's sons. Yahweh, our sovereign God, your glory streams from the heavens above, filling the earth with the majesty of your name. People everywhere see your splendor. Okay, that's good. Now, I want you to go to Hebrews 2, 5, and 3, 8. You can read the same version. For God would now... Now, this is Paul speaking now, okay? Okay. This is, this is the, you had Hebrews 2, 5, mm -hmm. 3, okay, go ahead. For God will not place the coming world of which we speak under the government of angels, but the scriptures affirm, what is man that you would even think about him or care about Adam's race? You made him lower than the angels for a little while. You place your glory and honor upon his head as a crown. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands, for you have placed everything under his authority. This means that God has left nothing outside the control of his son, even if presently we have yet to see this accomplished. Okay, you can stop there. You see that? The tragedy is we, we, don't, we haven't seen it yet, Paul is saying. He's given us authority, but yet we haven't seen this accomplished yet. Why is that? See, there, there are spirits and entities that refuse to obey the dominion man was given. You see that? They refuse to obey these orders that God gave. It says, we're dominion of the earth is every, are you getting that? That means your finances too. Everything upon the earth. And so it's a tragedy when you say, I can't do something. Are, are, you, are you getting that? And God says, I've given you dominion over every realm of the earth. Are you getting that? Are you seeing that? Somebody's catching something here. Yeah, that's really cool. Do you know nothing legal can happen on this earth without man's permission? Nothing. 
Since dominion was given in partnership with man to God to bring the will of the Lord upon the earth, God would do nothing without him on this earth. And so some people may think that, hey, what does is, what is God mean? If you're all powerful, why didn't you come? Why don't you come yourself? Are you getting that? If you're all powerful, why didn't God just... And I'm going I'm to I'm I'm pose the, the other question to that is, if Satan is, is, has so much power, why does he always try to use man to accomplish his will? Let me ask you that question. See, this explains, uh, as a matter of fact, I think, Jeremy, you said, somebody said, why does God need a son? See, God honors his covenant so much that he gave man that he won't do anything without him. It's not that he needs us. He gave us dominion down here. Are you getting that? God don't need us. He's, he's honoring the cover that he gave us. That I gave you dominion over all the works of my hand. Are you seeing that? And so you see now that the Bible says God, what another Adam did messed up, God sent another Adam to redeem. Now you're understanding why God needed a, a son. Are you in? He couldn't come himself because he had to come as a man in order to recapture the authority that was taken because authority was given to who? So that's why Jesus had to come as a man. Wow. Y'all better, yes. so wow. better catch this. Y'all better catch this. Because it sounds weird to the, but until the revelation of the Lord hits you. I gave the authority to man, so even myself, I won't override that authority and come. Mm. Ah, Lord Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus gave me dominion. Jesus, dominion. Jesus goes to hell, gets the key, brings it back, hands it to us and says, now go make disciples. Go tell everybody the authority and dominion was given back to you. Behold, I give you what? and authority over snakes and scorpions and by no means will they ever that is dominion ah, so cool about us y'all better catch this can I tell you something Jesus was not walking in the in heavenly dominion when he was on this earth he was walking in man's authority that's what Jesus that's what God sent them down here to show them show us what we're supposed to be doing My people perish good. Not a lack of authority and power, a lack of knowledge. See, Satan has authority. He's not, he's not after man's power. He's, I mean, Satan has power. He's not after man's power. He's after man's authority. Are you catching that? I'm going to show you this. But as a matter of fact, those, I'm going to show you something that God gave you. Sure. Those who operate in occultism or witchcraft or if ever any Santeria type stuff, through through willingness or ignorance, most of the time you'll find out it's through ignorance. They were just trying to search for something spiritual. <coughs> you hear me? Yeah. They were just trying to search for something spiritual. And so through their ignorance, you know what happened? If you ask yourself, why can't Satan just do witchcraft on you himself? Because Satan has no dominion. He has no authority. So therefore, he needs your authority. He uses the man's authority to cause all types of havoc. Oh, there. Ah, y'all better. People will tell you, matter of fact, if you ever was in occultism, they'll tell you, they teach you about the, the first thing they teach you on is earth, the power of earth. The power of water, the power. Anybody that's been in witchcraft before, don't raise your hand. I want to be looking at you. I'll be looking at you a little closer in the spirit. Can I tell y'all something? The elements of the earth have power. Did you know that? In fact, Jesus even showed us. Did you? What does he do? He didn't tell the man to go, go, go. He didn't spit in some dirt and wrap it on his face and then tell him to go. He did that because he, t he, he used the element of the earth and told him to go wash the water. He used the power of the... Because man has authority over the what? See. 
the earth. So he's demonstrating the... Uh, yeah. Wow. You know what Satan did? He used the power of knowledge to show us how to use it. Mm. That's how he did. Wow. Because man didn't know the dominion he had in, so he came as, and, and said, hey, let me show you how to use this. Because Satan came down here. One thing that was taken from Satan is he, he, was, he, his, he, he didn't just lose his place in heaven, but his, he lost his body. So therefore, when he came down here, he had no authority. Are you seeing why he had to come to Adam and Eve? Yeah. Yeah. I had to come to the ones who have authority. All these things that have been given to me. Who gave it to them? The Bible says in Genesis, I gave man authority and dominion. Are you getting that? Do you know a certain people that can look in the water and they can tell you your name? That stuff is real. Listen, they'll do some old types of motion over Therefore, witchcraft is not the power being used, it's the spirit behind. <laughs> Y'all better catch me. Oh, God. It's the spirit that's being used to use this information. You see, when you subject it under authority, what does that come with? Maybe God has not given you the jurisdiction to know about that. So therefore, the fallen angels came down here and began to show men how to make swords. Begin to show women how to make up their eyes, how to seduce. God sends a God sends a, a mandate that you should be subjected to your husbands. Satan says, "No, control your husbands." You see the difference? Oh my God! With great accuracy, they are able to do this. How you here? So therefore, water witching is actually using the power of the earth, power of the water, power to find out what it is. It's just a spear behind it. Has God given you the authority to do that? Are you seeing that? Yes. Somebody gonna get something out of this. Yes. See, in order for it to bring glory to God, the Holy Spirit has to be the originator of the miracle. Do you know you can get a miracle from Satan? Yes. Do you you ever see? Listen, there's people right now. You can go to a, a you can go to a, a, a African tribe, and you can tell them that I got a headache. Listen, he would look at you in the spirit realm and says, hey, bring me a chicken. He would cut the head off that chicken and your headache would go away. But what did he do? He appeased the spirit that was causing the headache. He, oh, boy. This might be too much for y'all. Do you see he gave a sacrifice to the... Why do you think they used to have them burn their babies? See, this is the lower Satan uses to manipulate men. A faster way to get power. When the dominion was yours already. Mm. How are you getting that? Wind has power of life. Did you know that? Look at this. Ezekiel 37 and 9 and 10. I'm going to read from the AMPC. It says, Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath and spirit, son of man. And say to the breath and spirit, thus says the Lord, come from the four winds. O breath and spirit, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied and he commanded me, as he commanded me, and the breath and spirit came into these bones, and they lived and stood up and in, in their feet, an exceedingly great host. You see that? What, what, what did he tell them? Prophesy and tell the four winds to bring life and spirit. Is that, are you seeing that? It's power. I told you an example of how. As a matter of fact, let me give you an example. Another example. You remember the legion when, when Jesus came? And the, the man that had a legion of demons in them. God had to give me this revelation. What? Jesus says, come out of them. He said, how many? He said, our name is Legion, for we are many. Brocade, many of them. Jesus says, come out. They asked Jesus, how can... Can we just go into these pigs then? Jesus said, go ahead. Think about that. They go into the pigs and then what they do? They run to the water. Why did they go to the water? Because it has power. You see? Outside of, a, outside of a body. Now, why would you ask Jesus to go into pigs and then you go run and jump off? 
Do you know what's called? It's, it's, it's such thing as people of the water. Do y'all know sirens are real? <sighs> this is that's not no. This is that's not no fake stuff. And people have had testimonies that listen. Satan actually took me for a contract, and the water opened up, and we went underneath it. What did Jesus have to do when the waters was roaring and he was sleeping? They got scared. Jesus stood up and says, be muzzled. You don't tell a storm to be muzzled. You tell a person to be muzzled. Why would you tell a storm to be muzzled? <sighs> this is why Jesus said to the disciples when he asked them, who caused this man to, to be blind? His sins or his parents? And Jesus says, neither. It happened that I may show you the works of God. Are you getting it? It happened that I may show you the power you have, the dominion. Oh, y'all better catch that. It said it happened that the works of God would be revealed to you so you would see the dominion you're supposed to be walking in. Oh, Lord Jesus. If you notice the Bible, as Jesus operated, I told you about the centurion. This is why he says, listen, I'm, I'm marveled that you know how this kingdom of God works. He says, I'm a man that's under authority. And Jesus, I know that my arm, listen, I know this power thing in this jurisdiction. Jesus, I know my arm and my power can't reach my son. But I know a man, listen, are you hearing me? I know something that has a jurisdiction that's over all the earth. And you only need to say the word. And Jesus says, what? It is as you have believed. Y'all better catch that. It is as you have believed. In what? The authority God is giving this man. Did you know certain people can get healings from me and certain people can't because you don't believe? You don't honor, you don't honor the gift that's inside of me? I used to wonder, like, why demons come out of certain people and other people don't? Because you honored you believe the authority God has given this apostle or this prophet. What does the Bible tell you? Believe in the prophet and so shall you be what? Established. Right? Because it takes faith to believe a man is talking, God is talking to a man. How are you getting it? Oh, Lord. You see the Pharisees saying what to Jesus? By whose authority have you come do this? The Bible says he taught with what? As a man that has great. In other words, this was different for people. The other man just gave us knowledge. And so we was kind of scared of their knowledge. They had power. They were smarter than us. They went to school. Are you here? Y'all ever seen anybody like that? Got a bunch of big words, but no power behind them. But he's saying this is different. He's saying the same thing, but yet he's talking as one who has authority. Remember, Jesus didn't cheat and use God's power. He was not operating in the realm of heaven. He was operating through the dominion of man while he was down here. Does he say, I can call upon angels to get me right now, but are you hearing me? And so he didn't take his pain. That's why the Bible tells you he came as us, having every temptation that we had, but he, this time he passed. What one man did that couldn't do, God sends another man to be faithful. Takes the key back from Satan and says, here now, go make disciples. Look at your neighbor and say, go make disciples. Go make disciples. If you notice, the first thing Jesus does, says to his disciples when he comes back, the Bible tells you he went to hell and got the key. Then he comes back and says, all authority has been given to me both in heaven and he already had it in heaven. Now I have it in both areas. Are you getting that? So Satan's temptation was not to do it. Just think about that. Satan comes and says, hey, seeing this light that's inside of you, I think he may be coming to try to get save these men. So therefore, uh, I'll take you on a kingdom that's high and I'll show you all the authorities. All these things have been given to me. The first thing he did was look at Jesus' appetite and says, hey, you hungry. I know you are. Eat this bread. Turn these rocks to bread. You have the power inside you to do that. Jesus says what? You should not live. Man should not. Then he says, okay, you spiritual. Let me take you to a higher place. 
all these kingdoms have been given to me. So Jesus could have essentially said and fail like Adam. You see, he had a chance to sin right there. And so instead of touching the, the forbidden tree, he chose to be nailed on the tree. Amen. Are you get, Amen. Oh, Amen. Tonight, that he may take the kingdom out. Because listen, that was an easier. Listen, what Satan offered him was easy. Listen, all you got to do is put, get on one knee and I'm, I'll just give it to you. But how many know there's something behind that? People that's been in Santa Maria, listen, witchcraft, they'll tell you. They, they promise you something, then all of a sudden, as soon as you do it, oh my God, they flip the script on you. And what you were supposed to have dominion over, now has dominion over you. Yes. Domination over you. In fact, I got, matter of fact, I'm going to tell you, a, uh, let me tell you this. I'm trying to remember how it went. You see, God chose man to bring his purpose upon the earth. Let me tell you, this is how this operates. Um, I, and this dream happened this morning. I was, I was, I was, I was in the dream, and I was, I was, I was presented as this Sunday. I was getting ready to teach. I saw my, saw my coach case and everything. I saw, saw everything. I got here, and um, uh, before, before I got here. Um, I, I had the desire, now y'all remember in the spirit realm, uh, you, you can see everything, and you, you don't have to go through the whole year before you can see the whole picture. You kind of automatically know. And so as I'm there, I have a desire to get married. And, uh, and the woman's here, you know, this, to this woman here, should I say. Uh, and, and, and so I'm, it, it's like she's before me and I'm seeing this good wife, submissive, and she's like, I'm like, ooh, this is everything I want, I want right here. And I'm talking to this person, I don't know it's Satan yet, they, but they offer me, they say, I can make this happen for you. And so I said, okay, we get married and everything. And I'm happy, I'm looking at the picture of this good wife. And, and so I come to church and I'm getting ready to teach. And I look down and I'm, I, I, my, my tablet is missing. And so I go to my wife as usual, I say, hey, help me, help me. And I say, honey, I left my, my, my tablet at home. Can you go get it? And so she goes to get it. And keep in mind, I'm looking at the time. And I'm like, okay, we got an hour and 15 minutes. I got, we got time. So I, I, I'm, I'm in rehearsal and everything. And so I, I notice my wife never comes back. And so I run to the house. And as I walk in, it's a party going on. <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, this, now she know. And I'm seeing, look, absolute vodka. I'm seeing. I'm seeing a bunch of people I don't know. <laughs> and I'm like, honey, I said, well, what do you, I start talking to her, what do you, what do you do? And she changes on me in a minute. Wow. I said, I'm going to do what I want to do. With this. And listen, she got me so frustrated. I, listen, I, listen, I don't, I've never cursed at her. And listen, <laughs> and it came out of me. What, what the hell are you doing? It just, it shot out of me. And, and I turn around, and when I look at her, she's under demonic influence. Wow. And I'm looking, during this, I'm looking at her, I'm talking to her, I'm saying, okay, we got 40 minutes. I gotta get back for the word. This is inside of me. I gotta get back for, okay, we got 30 minutes. I'm talking to her. I'm talk, okay, we got 20 minutes. And then before you know it, after I got done, an hour and 15 minutes had passed, past the time. Wow. And as I woke up, you know what God spoke to me? He said, this is what came into my spirit, spiritual time sharing. This is what came. Anybody ever had some timeshare before? Listen, anybody, listen, don't go on a vacation that they promise you got to go to a timeshare. <laughs> you ever seen the commercials? Have you got caught in the timeshare? <laughs> Call us, we'll get you out of it. <laughs> and God spoke that to me. Timeshares means you own part of it, but you don't know who else owns part of it. Oh, wow. And so the very thing that I, God was supposed to give me dominion over, now is dominating me. Caused me to miss God's timing. Are you can oh boy. Wow. This is what happens every time we choose. The very thing you thought you had domination was going was, was going walk in, now it's dominating you. The first time you put a cigarette to your mouth, you thought you was gonna enjoy it, now it enjoys you. It tells you what to do. Oh, Lord Jesus. You'll never see a man walk in true legitimate dominion outside of the authority and partnership with God. Thank you, Father. Are y'all getting some out of this?
Somebody say being a man both under authority and having authority. Thank you, Father. Now, let's check this out. Let me show you how. Look at this. Go to Exodus 3, 7. And New King James Version. Read through the 11th. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Okay, now we're about to see how, how does God come to the earth. Go ahead, 10. Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Do you see how God comes? Mm -hmm. Come now, I will send you. The one who has authority on the earth. Right. How does God come to this earth? Through you. Are you seeing that? Wow. Are, are you catching that? Come now, I will send you to. I've seen it and I've come. How does God come? By sending you. Are you ready to go? Mm. Are you ready to go? He honors his covenant so much that he comes down and says, now, I've seen the oppression of my people. Come now. In partnership, we're going to go take care of this. Are you seeing that? He uses the dominion that Adam, Abraham has, and you see all types of signs and miracles happening. Do that. In fact, you see, what Abraham was, 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 listen, he got the children of Israel out. Listen, he's leading. He gets to the sea. He gives them a good speech. God's getting ready to take you out. He's going, you're going to see his hand. And then he starts crying to God. You know what God told him? Why are you crying to me? Lift up your staff and split the sea. Are you getting that? In other words, I've already given you the authority. Why are you? That's what God's going to ask some of us in here today. Why are you crying to me? And I've already given you. I've already given you authority and power in your hands. And you tell me, you crying to God saying, help me. Oh, Lord Jesus. Now let's look at, let's look at what we, what we go wrong at. Number 11. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go oh, to Pharaoh? Who am I? Isn't that what we tell God? Mm. Who am I, God? That's the title. Who am I, God, that you would send me? Mm. Oh, Lord Jesus. Isn't that what we say? Who am I that you would cause me to be a prophet and prophesy to the Lord. nations? Yes. Do, you know what I'm, do you know what I'm seeing most of the time? Uh, matter of fact, we, see, we experienced it with Essence last week. Do y'all see she was going through deliverance? Do you see when she accepted her calling, demons started coming out of her? Yeah. It was the final thing that happened when she accepted her calling. As prophet began to prophesy, her name was meant to be, listen, Essence Gabriel, black messenger. Demons started coming out. Are you seeing it? Because it's prophesying to the, not to who she is now, but to the dominion God gave her. Yeah. Uh, y'all better catch this. I'm seeing many demons get to stay because people reject. As soon as I say, hey, you got to reject You got to set the calling on your life. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know demons are able to attack you? See, Satan gives, let me tell you something. Yeah. It's, it's two alternate personalities that you can have. You can have the one God gave you and you can have the one Satan gave you. And so therefore, when you hear something to say, I don't like talking in front of people, that is from Satan. Mm -hmm. You're looking at a man that was, was shaking at my first talking to people because I didn't like to be in front of people. Yet now, look at me converted to God. Listen, I can't wait to get up here and get the word. I accepted an alternate personality that God didn't give me that didn't have dominion. Are you seeing that? Oh, boy. Somebody's going to get somebody here. See, for every dominion and authority God has given, Satan creates an alternate personality for that. And he uses to speak against what God says in your life. This is why most demons have a legitimate ground to stay inside of you. Because you accepted something that God didn't call you to see. Are you seeing that? 
God says, no, accept my forgiveness, accept my, you're not guilty, I'm guilty. I'm guilty, no, I deserve to be punished. So it's not whether you have dominion and authority, it's whether have you accepted God's dominion. Are you seeing this? See, somebody's going to accept their calling. The Bible says, listen, the prodigal son came to himself. Somebody's coming to themselves today. Amen. See, it uses spiritual manipulation and condemnation. I think it's called denotation, where it uses one word to mean something else. That's what Satan does to us. He calls you a prophet, but that means uh, attack. That means I don't, I don't want to be bothered with this. Are you seeing it? You know what condemnation, a, con, a, a con, uh, connotation is? That means you use a word that really didn't mean what it, God called him. In other words, blue is a word, but yet we describe it as, yeah, I'm blue today. I'm sick. It's impossible for you to be blue today because blue is a color. <laughs> do you see how the enemy used? But he says, listen, I'm giving you dominion. You can do all things through Christ that what? I can't get nothing right. <laughs> Are you seeing this? I can't do nothing right. God tells you you can do all things. Satan says, I can't get nothing right. And you repeat it using your authority to cause yourself to come underneath. Uh, Y'all better catch this. Lord, I am with you always until the end of the earth. I don't have nobody. Nobody loves me. <laughs> wow. Are you seeing? Somebody say, who am I that you call me God? David says, who am I that you listen, that you would visit? Who is a man that you would visit? God says, listen, you're a man that I gave honor and authority to. That's who? Ah, oh, Lord Jesus. Did you know God says, woe? You know what woe means? Judgment is coming. Look at this. It says, woe to the one who argues and quarrels with their maker. Woe to the one who argues with their maker and asks, why did you father me? Wow. In other words, judgment is coming to you. The one who says, listen, will you tell up with the kettle tells up that, listen, you should have put my arm on this side. <laughs> Are you seeing that? It says judgment is coming. Woe is coming to the one who says, why did you father me? Father, why did you father me? Are you getting this? So woe, judgment is coming to the one who don't accept who God called him to be. Y'all better catch that. Shall the clay say to the potter, what are you doing? <laughs> this is God asking Job a question. Oh, Lord Jesus. He asked Job, he says, listen, I'm going to ask you some questions. And you must answer me. Can you set dominion over the earth and heaven? Do you know how it works? Can you lay a hand on Satan and not be tore? Are you hearing me? Do you know what makes him work? See, I have the one that have authority to give dominion. Y'all better catch this. Somebody say, who am I, God? Oh Somebody's getting ready to accept who they are today. Yes, God says, I've given you honor and dominion over my works of my hand. That's who you are. Mm. But we say, God, who are you that you would visit me? What did Abraham just say? What did, what did, listen, what did Moses say? God, who are you? Well, same thing. Who am I? That I should speak to the Egyptians. Who am I? I got a, I, listen, I got a speech stutter, God. Send him instead. So what you're telling God is you chose the wrong person. You didn't get it right, God. Oh, Lord Jesus. I'm unworthy. That's what you're saying. Instead of walking in God's dominion, you give Satan authority to have dominion over you. Are you seeing this? Are you seeing what the dominion God gave you? Upon every living creature upon the earth. Somebody say he came to himself. Did you come to yourself today? See, Satan through manipulation seeks man's authority. Are you getting that? Witchcraft cannot happen without a man. Because you need dominion and authority to be able to have it happen. Are you seeing that? Why, why do you think Satan don't just, well, why do you need man? Why don't he just do it? Same thing with God. Same answer. 
Why does he need man? Because man has the what? Dominion. Dominion comes with the authority. <laughs> authority is backed up with the power after you violate that authority. Are you getting that? I'm talking about you're going to need to apply this to your finances. Are you hearing me? Do you know I call forth money? Are you hearing me? I call forth to, I've called forth in dominion who I am today. It wasn't always, but I've spoke. Listen, money come to me. God, you gave me, you gave me, listen, let me tell you something. What do you, what do you I told you it's power and win, right? right? What do you think comes out of you when you speak? This is win. So therefore, when I'm prophesying to some, I'm using the elements of win to command a demon to come out of somebody. So therefore, I don't have to touch you. I can just command you to come. Ah, Lord Jesus, y'all. Y'all dry up in here. <sighs> dry as some three-day-old biscuits, y'all. Y'all dry up in here. Lord Jesus. Let me tell you, dominion don't even have an age. Do y'all know that? Look in 2 Chronicles, you'll see, listen, Joash, the Bible says he was seven years old when he had dominion. He became king. You know what we would say? Now, what would you say? Oh, now, I'm too young for this. But the Bible says this, at seven years old, he did what's right before the Lord. Think about that. And so is it, is it, is it God that puts the limitation of authority on you or is it us? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not old enough for that. You ever hear anybody say that? I'm not, just, I'm not old enough to have a house. Why not? Now you got to be in your 30s and, and, and 40, ready to settle down before you can have a house? No. See, the ones that walk in dominion will get a house in 19, 20. Listen, you can, you'll, be, you'll be thinking something special with them. They decided to just walk in their dominion that God gave them. Yeah. Right? He said, listen, the honor, that's what you have to see. He crowned us with honor that he would give man authority over the works of his hands. Over what? Everything. And so therefore, that means any opposing spirit in the sea, any opposing spirit or prince of the air, of the earth, through our dominion, we have to cancel. Now, here's the key. We're going to have to take up, we're going to have to take back what we, what we gave away. Amen. See, we're going we're gonna to do some proclamations today to bring back our dominion that God has given us. Yes. It's not bring it back. It's already there. It's sitting in the spirit realm. You just need to take the authority off. Listen, you need to accept it. So we're going to set some callings today, amen? amen. Are you getting that? So you think that you're not old enough, you're not qualified enough. Maybe if I go get three more master's degrees, maybe if I go to seminary school. You know, everybody I see that just go to seminary school has no power. All you got is knowledge. Huh? First thing, you know, we have people, to, listen. Hey, y all, y all, what church you go? What seminary? What, 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 what kind of seminary school you go to? God's. <laughs> you think I need a man to tell me I'm okay to preach the word of God? Show me in the Bible where God says, "Hey, you're going to, have to go to seminary school first before I give you this power." Mm. Behold, I've given you power. Are you hearing me? So, what is my qualifications, Jesus? <laughs> you want me to show y'all? Cause I'll slap the demon out of you. <laughs> Argumentum spirit, come on out. <laughs> but do you see how, the, how we put these little stimulations on our, it, 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 what is it? Stipulations. Stipulations on ourselves. And say we can't do something because we're not old enough. Mm. I didn't read enough. Let me tell you something. You know your authority doesn't go away but just because you messed up and sinned? Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord oh, Jesus. Man. It may give the Satan a foothold, but that doesn't mean he has authority over you. That's right. You think you think if I mess up right now and I forgot to pay a bill that my wife has the authority now to take the household? No. I messed up, and that's the only thing. If God forgive me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna correct this. But my authority still stands. You see how we'll take some authority away because we see somebody mess up. You see how we gotta line up with God's kingdom? Are y'all getting that? Lord Jesus, if you think you're strong enough to do God's will, you don't need God. Is that true? Huh? In your weakness, my strength is made what? Are you getting that? I just don't want to mess it up, God. Y'all stand to your feet.
Did y'all get something out of the word? Yes. Yeah, pretty good timing today, too. Look at that. So I'm, I'm going to tell you this, because some of us have accepted some sicknesses because our, it runs in the family. Yeah. Mama had it. Grandma had it. Diabetes run in the family. Oh, that runs in my family. Anybody ever say that? Do you know you're accepting through the authority that God gave you? You're accepting that? Some of us have some things that we have happened in our life and we wait for God and God says, I already gave you the authority over it. Mm. Now, I'm going to ask you questions. Are you willing? Are you ready to accept the calling on your life? Because we're going to break these things off of our lives. Listen, we're going to walk in dominion from now on. Amen. Right here. Not dominion because you deserve it, because God gave it to you. Are you getting that? Not to just walk in the power you have, the power to compel. All right? I told you that's what, what the enemy does with women most of the time. Listen, God gave them authority to, 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 to build their house up or tear it down. Yet they use the power of that office. It says, happy wife, happy life. In other words, she's going to act a fool if she don't get what she wants. You can find yourself in judgment of God because you abuse that authority and you use the power that God never gave you. He gave you the power to make the house, but you use it for your benefit? Are you him? Same thing with a man. He's giving me authority over my wife, but do I use it for my benefit to try to make you do something? No. I'm walking under the authority. The power has to come in now when I see her in my dream drinking vodka. <laughs> and <defying me. laughs> but I want you to see that dream tells me that God showed me that if I would have accepted Satan's way, she's already the wife who she is who I said that we, she is now. She's a myth. She's listen, she's a wonderful wife. But had I made the deal with Satan, you see, it Listen, what I was supposed to have dominion over would now be dominating me, and it caused me to walk backwards in my life. Are you seeing that? It caused me to miss the timing of God in my life. And so you can see that this is where, why you need to take out your little, what am I going to put it there? Listen, all your little checklists of what you think a husband going to be and a wife going to be. In, listen, you need to remove that. All right? Because if you have a price, Satan will find it, I promise you. Yeah. Let me tell you something. God, I'm going to say this to the women. God has not called you to try to have build a beer men in your life. <laughs> well, you got to put the parts on to make them a man. You know what that comes from? You don't know who you are. Jesus. So, therefore, maybe my goodness will transfer to them. And you end up injured after injury after injury after injury because you're trying to fix a man. And God never gave you the authority to do it. You got the power to, but you have authority. Are you getting that? What you call it, honey? You gonna have yourself a little boy man or? You want a little boy man? Grown boy. Grown boy, that's what it is. You want a little grown boy. It's a bunch of grown boys out there. Will you try to use your authority to fix them? Your power? Will you allow God? Because if God don't fix something, I'm telling you, it's just a front I'm putting on to make you think I am. Yes. <laughs> as soon as I listen, as soon as I get on that bank account, I'm going to show you. <laughs> Somebody's eyebrows on top of the plate. <laughs> <sighs> Come on, prophet. 